Okay, let's bring in the man who is now the former president of Loud and Live Sports, a good friend of ours, Matt O'Keefe. Matt, how you doing? I am good. It's good to see you guys. Great Thank you for your you. Amaz- amazing work with Wadapalooza. You oh, guys it was our pleasure. Awesome. That I and b- before we get going, I, I'll just say it again. Like Tommy had told me how cool that event was. I'd never been, and he was underselling it. Like it was, it was just an awesome atmosphere. It was great to see everybody. Um, so thanks for having us. It was, a, it was an absolute blast. And if you have a you should go. It is. That's it. I, I always say that it's like it's hard to describe uh, when people experience it. The, the hook is in. It's such a fun event. You oh, guys great. added to it. The broadcast was unreal. You guys did such a great job. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Thank you. It was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, appreciate you having us out. And now that we have you here, what is the new venture? Yeah, exciting new venture. Um, I don't. I think much to not, not to you know. Most people won't be surprised to hear, but I'm going to uh, join the HWPO training team. <laughs> So I will um, take on a leadership role with uh, Matt's Matt training business, HWPO, and, and uh, that'll be you know a, a big part of my focus moving forward. Um, so I'm excited about that. It's been you know a, a long, um, amazing run on so many fronts, and none more significant than with Matt. Um, and I know a lot of people you know know that you know he's my guy, and I've been with him since the beginning. And, so it's like sort of a, com- a nice coming home party for me. Uh, I'm really excited, honored, humbled to be, you know, a part of this and excited for what's next with HWPO. Mm-hmm. And, and I think a lot of people are wondering, like, how, how did this come about? Because, you know, from, um, I guess, a, a outsider's perspective, you know, you're, you're leading Loud and Live. Loud and Live has two semifinal events last year. Wadapalooza finally comes back and gets to host for the first time in two years. And then suddenly, you know, you step aside for other things. So where did that seed get planted to maybe make the switch? And what were some things around it that made ultimately led you to, to that decision? Yeah, it's a great question. I think it's been a, it's been a progression. I think, you know, and I described this when I, you know, announced that I was leaving loud and live um, there, you know, the last couple of years, obviously being home a little more, um, you know, you know, I, um, uh, had, you know, experienced some things I hadn't in a while, you know, and, and was reminded of some things that are really important to me, which is, you know, a little more balance. Um, not that this venture is not going to be a lot of work and a lot of time, uh, but being home and, you know, being, you know, closer to even people like Matt and Sammy uh, more uh, is something that's been really nice that over, you know, COVID has been tough, but like some of the nice parts have been that, you know, being able to spend more time with my family. Um, so I think, you know, primarily, you know, in the, in the, in the more recent months, it's been, you know, really, you know, in my face as we sort of started to kind of ramp back up and led up to Wadapalooza that, you know, um, it might be time for me to think about, you know, what my future looks like. And, um, you know, this opportunity was just like an undeniable one for me, you know, and Matt put his hand up and said, I would really love for you to come be a part of this more, uh, significantly. I was, it was like, it wasn't even something that I had to really think a lot about. I was like, all right, let's figure out how we make this work. What does this now mean? So yeah, I mean, loud and live. a lot of people can look at. Well, sorry, you, I think you cut out. Yeah, it, it, it. Yeah, I was gonna say. I'm sorry. Maybe it was a little play there. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people can look at what I've left behind here, and um, you know, and I think you know, I've worked. I worked really hard for you know all of that stuff, and with all of that stuff, and with so many great people, and I'm really incredibly grateful to you know my my partners at loud and live and, you know, the community I was a part of with Waza, the other events. Um, but, you know, I, you know, it was, it, it was just, it was a hard choice, but the right choice for me and my family. And, um, it's something I'm incredibly excited about. So um, I'm, I'm ready to dig in here. I already have started. So there's some exciting stuff coming with HWPO too. So it's great. What does this mean for loud and live? Because it seems like you got that organization to a place where it was really the only other player in the space when it came to putting on CrossFit events. All the other events are, you know, kind of single entity events, whether it's people who are, you know, have been doing this as a local event and then they've grown it into something a little bit bigger, but Latin live was the only events company and both of their semifinals are at least off the schedule for now that we had last year. And I think that has some people scratching their heads. What does this now mean with you leaving for Loud and live moving forward? Yeah, it, it, it's a good question. And it's some, it's an organization that I'm, you know, still helping today, you know, I'm going to be there in some capacity till the end of February to try to help with the transition. And I think they're working through it. Um, and I'm happy to help, 
them work through it. Um, you know, I want them to be successful moving forward. Uh, you know, the, the events and the community have a piece of my heart and I, I don't want to see that stuff, you know, take a walk back. Um, I think a lot of that stuff's to be determined. I think they're, um, you know, piecing through sort of, you know, how best to, to move forward. Um, there's a lot of great people in this space and a lot of great organizations that support that event, you know, as contractors. And um, so, the, you know, I think, you know, they're in a, a bit of a discovery phase right now that, you know, I'm helping them support. Um, so, you know, and I, I hope, um, I hope it's a step forward too. You know, I hope that somebody can come in and take what, you know, I've been a part of helping build uh, and facilitate it forward. I really do. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll always be here to support that stuff and, um, you know, wave the pom poms and, and do anything we can to help it, you know, continue to grow and continue to be what it is. Uh, but today, I think that is a little bit wait and see, you know, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, there'll be some clarity on that. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm curious, what, what other options were on the table for you that ultimately before, you know, ending in this particular result? Because I know, you know, just having some insight into your into your process and stuff like that over the years, you know, it's not always like, oh, this is the idea. I'm going to go do this. And it's just like that. You you have to investigate multiple options. Maybe some other ideas are tossed out on the table. And I'm curious what other potential possibilities were out there that ultimately led you to this circumstance right here. Yeah, great question, Tommy. Like, it, you know, it, in the grand scheme of things, it's been a it's been a fun process. You know, obviously there's pain involved. You know, I and I mean the easiest path for anyone is conti continuing to do what they do. Mm -hmm. um, and there wasn't, you know, this you know sort of discomfort or unhappiness there. It was it was a growth opportunity that I you know um, you know I took some time to sort of think through you know talk through with my wife and other people that I trust. And there are there. Are, have always been really cool opportunities um, for me to maybe pursue other things. Uh, this was the right one, you know? And so the process for me has never been, you know, um, someone that's been, you know, always looking for what's next. Um, I'm always, you know, fully nose in the dirt, grinding on what's in front of my face. Um, you know, and I had some time, you know, in the recent months to, you know, when this, when this arose to step back and, you know, think a little bit about myself for, you know, which I'm not good at and say, you know, what's best for my family and the people around me. Um, and, you know, what do I want to, you know, see myself doing 10 years from now. And, and this, you know, this is something that I looked at and I'm like, man, like this has so much potential. I'm already doing a lot of work with it. Um, I want to be doing more with it. Uh, and it, it just became a no brainer. Um, you know, I, I am grateful that, you know, and I've worked hard to, to have opportunity that other people have been along the way interested. It doesn't mean that those weren't great opportunities. It's just this one was the right one. Yeah. The online programming uh, ecosystem is pretty crowded. Uh, how do you turn this uh, thing that you know, Matt has gotten going here? How do you not only turn it into a, a really good online training program, but also a brand? Because I, I feel like Matt is more than just a, he's a brand unto himself. How does that now translate into what you guys are trying to do with, do with HWPO? Yeah, that's the exciting part. You know, Matt has uh, incredible reach personally. Um, and this brand has such deep meaning in, in, in um, you know, the sky is sort of the limit. What HWPO means um, can mean something to so many. It's, you know, work hard, show up, you know, do the work. Um, and we want to build platforms for many to experience that and help get better at whether it's life or something specific to sport, CrossFit. Um, I think we want to be a beacon in the functional community and, and just really help people and, and have platforms for people of all shapes and sizes um, and teach them a little bit about what, you know, particularly was Matt's mindset, which I think is transferable to more than just, you know, working out in a CrossFit workout. You know, Matt has a unique approach in a, in a really clear, concise mindset um, that I think a lot of people in life, whether you're a mom, dad, or you're just trying to lose some weight, or, you know, you're a high school kid trying to pursue your dreams, college athlete trying to get to the pros can, can learn a lot from. Um, and I'm really excited to dig in and, and find ways to better uh, give people access to that, you know, and I think um, democratizing Matt, and HWPO, you know, allowing more people access in relation to it uh, mm -hmm. is the goal. And uh, we're going to work our ass off to get there. Yeah. And, and you kind of mentioned that, you know, out of, you know, other options, this was the right one. And you talk about, you know, the, 
the elements of Matt's mindset and how he approaches things that are, you know, applicable to, you know, the broader community. I'm curious of what about the last year or so of Matt stepping away from being an athlete and moving more into the business side of things that uh, even made this opportunity the right one for you as far as like, okay, I think this is even a more enticing opportunity to work with him because of this growth that he's happened. So I'm curious what elements of growth you've seen from him. Yeah, that's a big part of it. Uh, you know, you never know when somebody retires, quote unquote, um, which Matt, you know, was, you know, sort of able to do whatever he wanted at that point. He'd earned that right, right? You know, what would be next for him? Not that I ever thought for one second it would be retirement um, <laughs> in the true sense. Um, and it really goes back to, you know, what the, the, the saying, you know, how you do anything is how you do everything. Well, that's the case with Matt. You know, he's yeah. turned the, the, the corner and transferred all that energy and focus that he put into his athletics into business. And uh, he's got an incredible entrepreneurial spirit. Um, you know, we're in lockstep on that, have been, you know, always, you know, with stuff like that. Um, and he started to dig in and do some work on that side. And it's it, it's been the snowball accumulation to today of like, OK, like this is just really where I want to spend a lot of my time. Um, he's so focused and, and energized around what we're doing with HWPO specific um, that, you know, I, I really you know, I really want to be a part of that and, and with him. Yeah. Do you see do you get a, like a and it, it's kind of hard to describe because I don't want to imply that he wasn't enjoying himself as an athlete, too. But like there's a level of. Um, maybe your tension, anxiety around performance and things like that. And what was at stake when he was competing, but it seems like he's just like having more fun now. Like he's able to enjoy some of the experiences that, you know, he wasn't able to in the past, or he's able to kind of like, you know, uh, I, I don't know, just kind of like, I don't know if let his guard down is the right term, but there's just a, a different kind of sense of how he's able to kind of, you know, enjoy the the entirety of of being retired and the experiences and being out in the community and meeting people and stuff like that and it just seems like a side that i haven't seen of him before yeah it's a great observation it's interesting matt knew uh the role he played in his own success and there were certain uh parameters that he had to live within from his perspective to be the best at what he was doing and he executed that and so i think you know some of the things that um, you know, he didn't necessarily give publicly or, you know, look, you know, he didn't have, you know, he didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to or some of those things you're describing, because in the end, it came down to what was going to help him win or not. And if it wasn't, then he was going to not focus on it. Right. So I think today, you know, first of all, he's been incredibly successful and, and he's incredibly proud of his accomplishments. So there's a lot of you know, um, pride and, and, you know, celebration in that, that brings, I think, a lot of exuberance and you know outward you know he's outward about that he should be right and and um i think a lot of those things that you're seeing from now is exactly precisely who matt is um he just didn't allow himself to be you know who he really was was to the fullest extent because it didn't benefit him doing what he wanted to do which was win the crossfit games every year so, <laughs> yeah. now that um, you have I, mean, I, I think that you know we've all kind of analyzed this for years and talked so much about Sorry, to yeah, the, we've all analyzed this stuff for years and kind of talked about, you know, um, you know, trying to get inside that, you know, what made him tick and like, you know, what was the makeup here? It was just that everything was very simple and black and white for Matt when he was an athlete. And, and he just literally had a singular focus and everybody around him bought into that too. Sammy had a role. I had a role. His parents had a role. And, you know, anyone close to him, you know, that was in the, that inner circle knew exactly what you know, we were focused on and every decision was made on that, you know? And so, you know, you didn't get as much of Matt because of that, because he was focused on one thing. Now that you're involved with HWPO, you mentioned some of the things that, you know, you and Matt want to accomplish with that, but where do you sort of start here in these next couple of months? Yeah, it's a great question. There's so many things to do. I want to do them all at once and, and, and be cranking. We're, uh, we've got some exciting stuff going on. Um, we're, we're building a, an app. So um, we're going to have our own app platform that will uh, be announced. So you guys are going to be the sneak peek here. Uh, we're going to announce that in the next couple of weeks right. um, and start to show people. I'm so proud and excited of it. We're incredibly proud um, and grateful to Hybrid for all their you know, partnership over the last year. And then they've been a big partner in you know, my 
progression into the business and, you know, what our next steps are as well. And it's just a natural progression. We have such a thriving community. We're building a team around this. And, and one of the big steps is that we're going to, you know, build our own app platform. Um, and I think people will be really excited about it. So that's like the real, you know, big focus right now for the next couple of months is getting through all of that transition um, and, you know, getting people, you know, acclimated with that um, and finishing it. So uh, there's a big job there. And then, you know, I think we're going to start to really dig in engineering new product, you know, our, our product is fitness and, you know, different platforms for people to ask and I, I mean, access and, you know, speak to, you know, maybe different sports, um, you know, different demographics. So we're excited about that. There's a lot of talk about that over the next 12 months, but for now we got a lot of work to do with, uh, with the new platform. Yeah. I mean, is, it, is that kind of like crazy to you? You kind of have to pinch yourself at times because you think back to like, what is it? 2013 ish, you know, you're the, you're one of the first people to, you know, to really to bet and back Matt Fraser, you know, with a pair of red line board shorts, uh, you know, <laughs> showing up at the, the Northeast regional um, and he's overhead squatting a house, but like nobody really knew who he is. And then, you know, almost not even a decade later, we're talking, you know, less than nine years later, you know, you're the, the, you know, helping lead his, his company, his brand as, you know, the five-time champ and all of this stuff that's happened in between. And you've, you've helped put on Wadapalooza. It all seems like this kind of crazy, wild, you know, magical journey when you look at it in retrospect. And I'm just curious, like how that impacts you. Yeah, it's, um, I've been reflective specifically to this and, you know, of my, you know, my exit and, you know, I don't always take a whole lot of time to smell the coffee, but, um, dreams do come true. You know, it's, it's, um, you know, through hard work really. And, you know, and I've learned that with Matt, you know, we've run alongside each other for, like you said, nine years. Um, yeah, I, I do have to pinch myself sometimes to make sure it's real because it is so cool. And it's, um, it's a journey that, you know, I couldn't have imagined would look the way it does, uh, but I always dreamt it might. And it, and it's play, and it's playing out every day and I get to do what I love with people I love. Um, and, you know, help change, you know, people's history, you know, it's, it's, um, it's so much fun. Uh, I'm incredibly grateful. I mean, I go back all the time and, and talk about, you know, that moment where, you know, Matt maybe didn't even have the full trust and took that step to say like, Hey, help me with my business. And, you know, neither of us had a, a like half an idea of what we were doing at the time. Like, <laughs> you know, honestly, we're, we're being straight and, and, it's been a wild, wild ride. And it's just like, you can say that about so many things in our industry. I mean, I can even just relate it to my, some of my stuff and, you know, we'll continue, Daniel Robbins is coming and we'll continue to manage athletes. That's been such a big piece of what, what I do and we'll continue yeah. to do that. And, you know, I'm excited too, but that group alone too, like with Matt, you know, just helping, um, you know, you know, built, they built trust in me and gave me, you know, trust, you know, again, before I maybe felt I, had you know really my feet under me to 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 earn, you know to earn that and it was like you know they, they all forward thought with me and invested in me too right as i did them you know and you see brands uh you know like noble and rogue and man think about what it looked like when you mentioned 13 and what it does today and it's um and you guys like you're, you're all part of that like everybody has you know found space and run to it and spread their wings in it and uh it's just a really unique group of crop of people in the world, uh, you know, that we live in um, with incredible spirit, you know, entrepreneurial spirit and, um, and it's collaborative too. You know, we all try to wash, wash each other's back and help each other. Uh, we point in a very similar North and it, it's, it's honestly, it's awesome. It's, uh, you know, I'm so, so humbled to be a part of it. You leave the event side of things at a very interesting time. This is the first time in a while now that we've had the exact same season structure for two straight seasons. And the semifinals have always been interesting to me because it's such an interesting model with, uh, as I said before, companies that aren't necessarily event companies, unlike Latin Live, running these things. Now that you're, you're backing away from it and you look at it where it is now, how do we sustain the growth and the success of the sport under this current system? 
Yeah, I think some continuity is, you know, a part of it, right? Like, and I know you guys, we've all talked about it. You guys have, um, you know, is, is really starting to build a foundation to, to, to grow off of. And I think, you know, we're finding, you know, some consistency now year over here, you know, two years in a row, which is great. Um, and I think, you know, we all have to continue to remember that we're um, in growth mode. You know, everybody is, the NFL is, you know, and I think, uh, there's nobody that's arrived and there's nobody that doesn't need to continue to work together in order to be successful as a sport. You know, the, the long-term success of this space requires all of us to continue to do what we've done the last 10 years, which is support each other and think about the collective good, um, you know, greed and, uh, you know, you know, singular focus can, can be super damaging to that in the long term. So I think, you know, um, CrossFit and event organizers and athletes and brands continuing to stay in lockstep is vital for the long-term success. I mean, man, we've overcome a lot to get where we're at today. Um, it's a, it's a historic story for a sport to be where it's at today uh, that others have been able to tell what the rest of it is going to require a lot of what the same, you know, a, a lot of the same of what we've done on the front end of it, right. It can't stop now um, or it will just, you know, level off. Right. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, interesting you know yeah my, my focus becomes you know obviously different moving forward but um you know as does matt and myself um, we care for athletes still and will moving forward um we're all here to help continue to facilitate what's been built um and and that's that's got to be a big part of it moving forward you know i really want to see what this event season looks like um you know now that we've got our feet under us people that have done it once before i want to see those events grow some of them are going to get to really operate for the first time live so it'll be really a, you know a great year to kind of see the full scope um and i hope they've learned you know we've all learned stuff from mistakes we've made maybe as an official uh, event organizing you know group and um or seeing things that we do really well that people can grow off of um and some of those people that have been a part of those things um whether it's been a Wadapalooza, or, a, you know, a rogue um, people that, you know, are part of other events as well, because there's a lot of that community that supports the larger events. They take things back and they help grow their businesses around that because that's what they are in the end. Right. You know, uh, an individual event semifinals, a business and it has to be a business. Um, if it's a passion project, it's not sustainable. You know, um, it's cool and it's great. And, it, you know, all those events are amazing. But, if you know, if, they, if those aren't, you know, uh, progressing, thriving businesses, that's where we're going to have problems. Right. So I'm here to support that. You know, we will get involved in some event stuff as well, you know, on the programming side and, you know, helping uh, bring crowds by Matt showing up and, uh, you know, other athletes doing the same. Uh, it's vital, you know, everybody doing their part. Speaking of that, what evidence have you seen over the past couple of years that that collaboration is indeed happening? Yeah, it's um, I think I think that the well, certainly within the event community, it is like I said, I described the you know, I, I know that, you know, we've always, you know, on the loud and live side been incredibly willing to help anybody that's, you know, an event organizer. I never looked at that as competitive. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there was, you know like the analogy on the CrossFit side is like we all support the open because the open is the catalyst for our entire space right it's the same for events like you know if, if one of our you know brothers in another country that's running an event isn't successful I think it reflects on all of us so I think that that, that community has been very tight-knit stuck together and used best practices to share uh, to help people grow. And, um, you know, there's been a different look at CrossFit overall, which has been positive, you know, and I think um, they're looking for the right uh, formula to, to help this thing being long-term successful. Um, you know, th th that, that's stuff that they have to continue to work on. And, you know, guys like myself are there to help. Um, yeah. You know, I have a unique seat now where I can probably be a little more c consultative, um, which, you know, I'm happy to do. Uh, th that stuff has gotten incredibly better and um that has built confidence that it will continue to get better and it has to you know and if it does if it doesn't it's going to be it's going to be trouble but I, I do have the confidence that you know what's happening behind the scenes that hadn't a lot before is conversations collaboration um and that just has to continue and grow mm -hmm. uh and you know an, a, maybe a continuation of that is you know in what ways do you see 
growth opportunities to benefit the athletes directly because you work with them, you know, uh, and you have for so long uh, with some of the biggest names in the sport. And we're slowly starting to see some, you know, events put a bigger prize purses, maybe new brands come into the space to offer up, you know, good sponsorships. But I'm just kind of curious, um, you know, what are some things that you think are on the horizon, at least as ways that we can professionalize this for the athletes? Yeah. It, it, and it's another great question. I think, you know, um, you know, as athletes, you know, um, their platforms helping all these things thrive points back to them eventually. Right. And that's the plan. And it, ha you know, it has to be right. Like, the, you know, how um, we get more, you know, it really comes down to eyeballs, the more eyeballs that engage, whether it's through a broadcast or on site, the more um, brands are attracted and, you know, the more willing they are to invest in athletes, you know, individually, directly, and then to things that those guys participate in. Um, and we know that, you know, Eric and Justin know that. Um, so it's just, you know, and, and the athletes do too, you know, I think they're in a, a good spot today um, where they've got a voice um, and they're saying the, the, the right things on, you know, we're willing to promote a lot of these things um, and, you know, we want to work on progress and, you know, everybody is at, in a good spot today and now the progress needs to happen and it's going to take all of us to do it. You know, they're, um, you know, what does it look like for them the next couple of years? I think, you know, what's really exciting is, um, what's continued to grow is the, the relationship with brands in the space. Um, you continue to see non-endemic brands, you know, incredibly attracted to getting some sort of taste of, you know, being involved in an event or with an athlete in the space, because it's such a incredible incubator. So um, that's thriving and growing. So that's really cool. Um, and it's, you know, when it thrives and grows, um, the pot grows and so does the pool, you know, a deeper group of athletes get paid. Um, so it's really, really fun and exciting to see that continue to grow. Um, and then again, that trickles down to the, the, you know, the performance type stuff, you know, um, more prize money means, you know, more brands involved, uh, more eyeballs help all of that, you know, the more people engage the product. So, you know, the more people that participate in the open is a very big key ingredient, you know, us, all, all of us have to point towards that athletes broadcast people, it doesn't matter who you are, you know, if the open thrives, the rest of us thrive. Yeah. So it, it, it's, um, yeah, I mean, I'm excited. I really am because I think it's continuing to grow and thrive, even in some of the toughest times, you know, in our history, you know, just as a nation. Right. So it's, um, it's been a really cool time to be an athlete. Um, and we're seeing more and more get uh, rewarded for their hard work. So the, the work's not done. There's so much to do there you know, and, and helping this next crop thrive, um, you know, and there's, you know, but we're all again, pointed in the right direction, trying to get there. Yeah. As you look back on your time at Loud and Live and you get set for this next part of your you know, professional career, what are you the most proud of that you accomplished during your time uh, on that side of things? Oh, man. Um, it, it's, it's really, it's the relationships, honestly. It's, it's, um, you know, that I was able to be a part of uh, an organization that brought a lot of joy to a lot of different people. Um, and whether it was, you know, opportunities for people like yourself or athletes, you know, spectators, uh, brands, we've just seen so much growth over the last four years. And to be able to help facilitate that um, and have the trust for people to take forward steps with people like myself and an organization I was in charge with um, is incredibly gratifying, rewarding. Um, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm incredibly proud of all the relationships and trust I have, you know, that's, um, there's a lot of work that goes into that and there's a lot of experience, um, you know, and, and I'm proud of, I'm really proud of that, you know, and I'm, and I'm proud of all the people that, you know, have been a part of everything that I've done, uh, because a lot of people have invested a lot of their time and energy in that, uh, sometimes with like a lot of confusion and blur. You know, like, hey, where are we going with that? I mean, think about this. We did the UIM thing t together and it was like, what are we doing here? Like, you know, hey, we're just going to be active, you know, and it's yeah, <laughs> it's stuff like it's stuff like that. Like I could get into so many micros. It's like, think about United in Movement, right? It was like a time where, you know, if you could really place yourself back in that time, it was like bedlam, concern, chaos, lack of clarity. The world was ending. And all of us said, you know, I happen to, you know, have the privilege of, 
aggregating a lot of people, all of us, including yourself, just said, you know what, let's do this thing and do good for people and raise a bunch of money. That's the power of what we built. That's the trust we all have in each other. And that that's where all my pride is. Yeah. Huh. I, I'm, it, it's, it's crazy to think about like what could still happen given like, especially reflecting on, you know, the United movement. Cause I, I was just kind of like, cause we, I mean, we broadcast for what, 12 hours it was a while, yeah. from, from here. Yeah. And I was like sleeping on the floor, but it was just like, <laughs> you know what, like you talk about that entrepreneurial spirit and like the, the way that people rally in that, in that regard. And we're just like, yeah, sure. Yep. Let's do it. I'm gonna sleep on Sean's, you know, <laughs> kitchen floor and let's get after it. Yeah. We'll that, that thing, that thing came to, I mean, you guys know you were a part of it. That thing came together in a week, you know, <laughs> and we put on a 24 hour live broadcast and, you know, Sean, you've been in the broadcast game longer than any of us. I know actually one of our conversations was you're going to do what, yeah. you know, and it's, and it's like, wait, yeah. but we did. Right. And it, yeah. and it was, you know, uh, undeniably a shit show at times, right? <laughs> and, and, but, but, but in the end, what did it do? It raised yeah. a half a million dollars, a lot of people that could use it. And we got to be present, you know, and it's, it's, um, man, that's the, that's just like, that's who, like, that's a really cool defining moment for a lot of people to look at, at what this is and, you know, what we all do and, you know, how we all kind of try to do things together. Yeah, for sure. Um, how nice is it that, you can just drive up to Vermont now, uh, you know, for, for work stuff. I mean, I know you could before, but you yeah. know, a little bit, a little bit closer than maybe Miami. It is. Uh, it is awesome. Um, I'm done with airplanes. So I'll tell you, <laughs> I was, I was, uh, I was on one every week for years. Um, I would fly to Miami on a Tuesday and home on a Thursday most weeks. And um, again, I mean, it, at the time when I did it, it made perfect sense and I wouldn't change anything. But um, to be able to hop in my car and beat about in Sammy's in, in three hours, yeah, um, I'm excited to make that my Tuesday or Thursday. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Yeah, you know, it's a little easier when your kids call and they're like, Dad, can you come home? And you're like, shit, yeah, I can. I'll just hop in the car and come <laughs> home. You know, I'm on, I'm on my time. But yeah, it's um yeah, I'm a, I'm um I'm really excited. And it's like, you know, and I come back to the front end of that, which is, you know, things that, you know, as I reflected, you know, were most important to me, you know, and people are it, right? And that's my family, Matt and Stanley. It's these athletes that we've worked with for years and and to be able to have the opportunity and now you know, essentially a built in excuse that to be here a lot more is, you know, really just what perfection is to me. You know, I get to spend more time with my family and the people I love. Yeah. And touching on that, because I, I noticed that, you know, you had your family at Waterpalooza and I don't know if you ha I don't know for if you had had them in the past, but seeing um, them this year, it, it just felt I don't know, may maybe it was just me reading into something I wasn't there, but it felt different, like, you know, getting to have them there and I, you know, saw you know saw your son running around jumping on the rocks and, and it was just, it was just it seemed like it seemed like you were able to like enjoy and celebrate this with your family a little bit more yeah you know i mean i you know i kind of had you know i had an idea of, of what was coming you know uh you know not all of it had sort of taken shape yet mm -hmm. and you know even even absent that you know something sort of dawned on me leading up to that you know a few months and it was a part of like all these decisions that i was making was like hey you you know me being away as much as i am is a big struggle parent essentially i got a 13 or 15 year old that need a lot of help and great kids but i mean they're needy right like they just need to be parented and she shouldered a lot of that burden and you know one of the things dawned on me was like you know the lack of context i think for what i do mm -hmm. uh, because they really haven't been able to be at a whole lot of stuff because if they came to everything i did they would essentially be on the road the whole time right <laughs> so it was um you know i had said to my wife a few months earlier like it's really important to me that you guys are there the whole time and you know i want to share this with you and it, it was uh there was a big moment um, you know, that I shared with my family and, and my wife said something to the effect of like, wow, like I, I knew, you know, what your job was, but I had no idea what you did really. <laughs> and it was like, uh, you know, a sort of a validation moment for me where it was like, okay, they get it. You know, my kids can see my hard work, um, and all these people that, you know, come and contribute to this and um you know they can look back on this time and be like you know my dad was away you know i i have friends like this now it's like oh my parents traveled all the time and it's like now it can be like my dad traveled all the time and did some really cool shit 
Yeah. And um, that was important to me and it, and it was special. And it was, you know, obviously quite possibly my last. And and um, I wanted to make sure they experienced that. It made it perfect. Honestly, I had, you know, you know, you saw it, you know, many athletes that we work with um, were there, Matt and Sammy. Um, you know, I had some other friends there that, you know, and they always like dig in on me and come in and support. <laughs> and it was just like, it was so cool to have them all there and, and experience that with me. Yeah, it was, it was funny because um, me, me and Rory were at that desk and, and your son was jumping behind on the rocks behind. And I had this I have this I have this vivid memory because you, you remember when we did the Europe trip uh, for Marston's 30th a while back and you and you, uh, you and your family came to and we're like helping guide everything for us. But I remember we were at the Palace of Versailles and. It felt like every 30 seconds you had to be like turn around and locate your son because he was like <laughs> climbing on something and jumping on something. He was just like spinning. And then oh. I got to see uh, see him out on the rocks. I was like, oh yeah. Oh, there he he's is. Grow, he's he's like a, up a little. Yeah, I was gonna say he's like you know, no, nothing, like, nothing's nothing's changed. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's it's so funny. Like he'd come back. It, the, the, the nice part about their age was it was like a it was really fun because it was just sort of like, let them run, you know, mm -hmm. give them the access and just, Hey, don't go on the floor and have a good time all the while knowing that he was certainly going to leverage the fact that he was my son across the <laughs> property, you know? And, you know, coming back with like, you know, a new headband or something on his wrist or a shirt. And I'd be like, Hey buddy, wh where'd you get that? And he's like, ah, I just told him I was your son. You know? <laughs> so, so he had a lot, you know, it was fun. You know, it was a little micro fun story from the event was that his principal was there and I didn't know um, his prince. So my high school was one of the first CrossFit um, school programs in the country or the world that for that matter. Saint, I went to a prep school up in Massachusetts and mm -hmm. the guy who runs that and, and is also the principal of the middle school portion which is my son's principal uh, had volunteered to judge and um, mm -hmm. somebody came up to me uh, that weekend like Thursday night and they were like hey uh, Jason LaRock uh, your son's principal is judging on Bayside and I was like what like okay you know make sure he judges the best athletes you know I want my son to I'm like, hey, maybe I'll get better grades here if we <laughs> judge the best lane and every. But um, it, was, uh -oh. it, was super, it was super cool. So Jack, you know, now gets to go back to school and kind of, you know, puff his chest a little bit because there's a big CrossFit presence at my my awesome. former high school. So it's super cool. That's awesome. Well, Matt, listen, man, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. It's always fun talking to you and, and best of luck moving forward. I, I know that Loud and Live and the CrossFit community will miss you on that side of the house, but uh, it'll be good to still have you involved uh, in some way, shape or form. Well, thank you guys. Honestly, I, I think that I do want people to know that like I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. If nothing else, I'll probably be more present. You know, we've yeah. got a lot of work to do and I want to be a part of, you know, anything I can do to help, you know, the success of the space. So I'm not retired. I think, a lot, you know, there's been a little gap between me saying I'm done to, you know, this, not telling people that I am actually doing something else. I think, I'm, I'm flattered that people thought I was retiring, but I'm not. So <laughs> I will definitely, I'll definitely be around. And thank you to you guys for everything you guys do. And you guys have been some of my biggest fans and, uh, you know, helped me grow, um, giving me a platform to speak when things were tough or good, didn't matter. Uh, and, and, you know, I've always been there for me and I appreciate you guys a lot. And I look forward to talking about all the new and fun, exciting stuff we do over some time here too. Yeah, man. Can't wait. Absolutely. Don't be a stranger. I won't. Thank you guys. Go, go Rams. Thank Woo! you. I appreciate that. <laughs>